Hey, it's Tom and Mike from Take Time to Travel. We caught the train from Lisbon and had a wonderful day trip to the beach town of Kashkaish, where we wandered around the quaint Centro Historico, enjoyed the many beautiful beaches, and explored most of the other scenic spots in Kashkaish. Of course, we also had some delicious food too. Today, we're going to take you on a full tour of Kashkaish to hopefully give you some ideas on what to do during your visit. We'll start in the Old Town, or the Centro Historico, with its narrow streets and patterned calzada walkways, where we wandered along the lively Rua Frederico Aruca walking street for a little bit and then headed over to another main street, which was lined with many attractive restaurants and shaded patios. You'll also find a really long lineup for a very popular gelato shop and rows of tall palm trees. We continued to walk down the charming street and turn the corner to find this bustling square filled with even more places to grab a bite to eat or something to drink. But we're starting to get hungry, so let's keep going past the Palisette Seychelles and walk along the Old Town's beautiful beachside promenade that has a fantastic view overlooking the picturesque white sand of Riberia Beach, where we saw lots of people having fun and even playing some kind of soccer volleyball, which was really interesting to watch. They were impressive. We're going to have lunch across from the beach at that yellow building over there, at a popular restaurant called Hyphen, where we made a reservation in advance. Good thing we did because it was quite busy. We were lucky enough to get a table upstairs with our own cute little private balcony that had a lovely view overlooking the beach. We had a couple of Heineken beers to start our meal followed by the ranchera eggplants with avocado, black beans, ricotta and feta, tomato, jalapeno, miso and kale. Then we shared the salmon tataki salad with avocado, parsnip, leek, poached egg arzac and more, as well as the pumpkin pie with goat cheese, almonds, spinach, basil and pumpkin seeds. I loved the pumpkin pie with all that goat cheese but Tom preferred the salmon tataki salad, which tasted amazing, just like everything else. Overall, we loved our meal at Hyphen. The service was great, the food was delicious, and we had the perfect seats. But let's keep going, because Tom's got a sweet tooth and he wants some dessert. We decided to try Au Meilleur Croissant de Minerua, which is known for its croissants. We got the Kinder Bueno croissant, which sounded really appetizing, but in our opinion, it wasn't our favorite. We still finished it though. Tom was still craving something sweet, so we decided to try Scoop and Dough, which had a line out the door. It's a popular vegan shop with ice cream and donuts. After we placed our order, we grabbed a table inside their back dining area which was nice and shaded from the hot midday sun. I ordered the handmade apple crumble donut that was filled with spice roasted apples and caramel and topped with oat crumble. Tom chose the handmade raspberry and vanilla donut filled with homemade raspberry infused creme anglaise. My apple crumble donut tasted pretty good and had a nice filling in the center. Tom's donut was the winner though. Overall, we enjoyed Scoop and Dough, but their vegan donuts sure aren't cheap. But let's keep going and check out the beaches, starting with Praia da Reina, which is a pretty little sheltered beach right beside the Centro Historico. And just a few minutes walk from there, across the street from this beautiful yellow building, you'll find Praia da Ribera de Cascais, which is another gorgeous white sand beach that can get pretty busy later in the afternoon. It also extends all the way down to the next beach, called Praia da Duquesa. When joined together, they form the longest beach in the area. Walking past the Palmela Palace at the end of the beach, the pathway passes by the Alberto Romano Ocean Pool, which is another great area to relax and enjoy. It's overlooked by some patios and these modern buildings what a great view. 
As we walked further down the popular seawall promenade, we enjoyed the lovely scenery. And about 15 minutes later, we arrived at Tamariz Beach, which is yet another expansive shoreline with a white sandy beach lined with even more restaurants and patios. Kashkais is lucky to have so many beautiful beaches within walking distance of each other. At the far end of Tamariz Beach, there's Forta de Cruz, which was a fortress dating back to the 17th century that was part of the coastal fortifications and is now an impressive event venue, just steps away from the beach. Also across from the Forta de Cruz, there's the Tamariz Ocean Pool, which is yet another lovely spot to take a dip in the water. This one even has a couple of sandy beach areas. These ocean pools sure are a great idea. But let's keep going, there is more to see. Continuing to walk along the seawall, we came across this interesting looking green rocky shoreline. And after walking for a few more minutes, we arrived at Posa Beach, which has a large rocky section in addition to another beautiful white sand beach further down, where you could find many locals and tourists sunbathing and enjoying the gorgeous scenery and the perfect weather. Now let's turn around, past the sundial mural, the lush tropical greenery, and the many restaurants with inviting waterfront seating, and head over to Mercado de Vila, the Cascais Village Market. Inside the large hall, you can find many local vendors selling an assortment of products from their tables and stalls. We saw lots of plants and flowers, as well as tables piled high with produce. All of the fresh fruit and vegetables looked so appetizing. But let's have a look outside to see what else there is. The market opens into a courtyard surrounded by shops and restaurants with a nice shaded seating area in the middle. Next, we'll head back through the old town and check out some more of Kashkaisha's attractions. About a 15 minute walk from the market, there's the Citadel of Kashkaish. The fortification was built between the 15th and 17th century to protect the Kashkaish coastline and defend from attacks up the Tagus River to the Portuguese capital of Lisbon. The citadel sure is an impressive structure. The fortress has since been repurposed as a public space for recreational use. Inside the thick stone walls, there's a large open square in the center, where you can find the Cascais Art District that has an upscale hotel as well as an art center and some interesting sculptures. Right in front of the fortress, there's the picturesque Kashkais Marina, which has 650 moorings, as well as some shops, boutiques, bars, and eateries, with attractive patios extending all the way down the promenade. And just across the street from the marina, you can find the Condes de Castro Guimarães Museum, which is set in a small sandy cove right next to the sea. The Revivalist-style palace was built in 1897 and houses exhibits of paintings, ancient artifacts, and old books. Right next to the museum, you can wander over and spend some time in the Marichal Carmona Park. It's one of the most extensive and beautiful gardens of Kashkaish, with lovely landscaping as well as large open green spaces, which are perfect for picnics. You'll even find some chickens and roosters running around. We heard there were peacocks too, but we couldn't find any. So let's keep going past the scenic Mirador Casa de Santa Maria Lookout Point and the Santa Maria House Museum over to the Santa Marta Lighthouse, which also has a museum. But we prefer the outdoors. So let's continue to walk over towards another popular attraction in Kashkais. On the way, we enjoyed the views of the picturesque rocky shoreline. And after about 10 minutes of walking, we arrived at the entrance to Boca do Inferno. On the right, there was an amazing view down over the cliffs. 
And on the left, there was another lovely vista out to the ocean. There's so many great spots to take a selfie. Continuing on, we followed the nice wide pathway down towards the ocean until we found everyone crowded around the main viewpoint of Boca do Inferno, enjoying the coastline's incredible natural beauty and the powerful waves crashing against the jagged cliffs. It was spectacular to see in person. Just beside the lookout point, you could also head down these stairs and find this less busy spot closer to the water with some local fishermen trying their luck. Then on our way back towards the old town, we went through the Boca do Inferno market where we saw many vendors selling knickknacks, clothing and souvenirs. Once we got back to the Centro Historico, we were getting hungry. So we decided to go and find somewhere to eat. As we wandered along the narrow walking streets, we came across this eatery specializing in mussels. So we gave it a try. It was kind of early for dinner. So the restaurant, Mool's and Gin, wasn't busy, but it was charming inside. We ordered a Heineken beer to begin our meal. Then we shared this large portion of deep fried mussels with sweet chili sauce and mayo, followed by this bucket of curry mussels with mango, accompanied by another bucket of french fries. It was tasty and we finished all of it, but the deep fried mussels were our favorite. If you enjoyed our travel guide on what to do in Qashqais, then please like, subscribe, and check out our video on Lisbon's Timeout Market. We'll also have more Lisbon content coming soon. And remember, take time to travel. Catch you on the next one.